Welcome to the Higher Encounters Christian Ministries webcast. In the human heart lives misconceptions, and because of this, our understanding of God and of mankind is flawed. But through encounters with Him, we receive revelation. God opens our eyes to who He is and to who we are. After that, nothing is the same.
Great. 
tries to dim my view. Then I just look up to Jesus. He is standing close by. And once again, His great love shines on through. live over in uh, Harrison County. Uh, I had a lot of fun over there. <laughs> One time comes in particular. I think it was just me and Dana home. I don't know where Josh and my honey was. So I got to enjoy this. But I remember I was in the living room. And when you're a dad, you get, you get used to your kids hollering at you, you know. Dad, dad, dad. But anyway, Dana was kind of grown. And I remember looking up and seeing her going back and forth to the kitchen. I didn't know what she was doing. You know, until something, when you're a parent, unless something's on fire or you hear loud noises, you tend to ignore it. I didn't know it, but something was on fire. After a little bit, you know, I was doing something, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I was watching TV. I don't remember that part. But she said, Dad, didn't sound all that anxious. You know, that was just a practice, Dad, as far as I was concerned. <laughs> and then she said, Dad. Then she started saying, Dad, a little bit more urgently. What happened, she'd set her bed on fire. Uh, back... When I don't, I guess they don't do this anymore. But the springs had straw in them, and we didn't have a flashlight. Dana was looking for something, but she knew where the matches were. And so you know the rest of the story. The, what she was doing, going back and forth the kitchen, she was carrying glasses of water. <laughs> she thought that maybe Dad wouldn't have to get involved in this. I took one look at it, and I just flipped the mattress up, picked it up, carried it outside, and turned it over where I could do something with it. Then I got it wet. And the reason I said all of that, you know, people are looking to you for something. Occasionally it's to put out a fire. Firemen know this, I suppose, already. When you're a mom or dad, you you know that holler of your kid that means something. Like I said, when Dana started to put a little something in her voice, I knew what it meant she needed me now. And I began to think of sources through the Scripture, and I don't know if I'll do a good job, but I, I've been thinking about what it means to be a source for something. A lot of times we don't recognize people. I think what God wants us to do is to figure out where we need to get what we need to get and what people need to get from us when they're looking to us. Sometimes we give them the totally wrong thing. <laughs> you want, uh, you want to, I worked with a guy. I don't know if I should tell this or not. It's going to let me look kind of stupid. 
For those of you that know me pretty well, I am stupid. <laughs> so. But people don't know. What, I, I have a hard time figuring out what people want sometimes. And some people just got such a thick accent that I really have a hard time. And I was at work. And a guy come up to me and he had this real thick, I guess it was city accent. He said he wants pepper. I said, what? He said, what's pepper? <laughs> I said, got any pepper? I said, what? <laughs> and he got this real strained look on his face. And I said, here's a paper. I said, anybody has that look on their face? I thought he had to go to the bathroom over bad. So as a carpenter, you learn, you carry tissue in your car because you, you don't know where you're at or where the bath is going to be. Across. So I walk to my car. <laughs> is this what you want? <laughs> and he said, no, man. And he was wanting to roll a joint. He wanted to know if I had some paper to roll a joint. I said, sorry, dude. I can't help you there. Somebody was looking to me for a source. I didn't know what they wanted. When I finally did out what they wanted, I really didn't want to be a source anyway. I suppose, you know, they could have made a joint out of that. I guess it maybe would have offended him. But <laughs> So if you come and try to tell me what you need, I don't understand sometimes. <laughs> Pay attention to who you're talking to. I keep telling my wife that. I'm a man. I like obvious things. I need them to be as obvious as possible. But when we're looking for uh, sources, first off, we've got to figure out where it is that we, or that we need. You know, a lot of people, they're looking for things, but they're looking really in the wrong places. Maybe to people that they can't really give them what they want. Uh, I think that's very important, especially when you love someone. You want to figure out if they're able to give you what you're asking for. Because sometimes they're not really able. I was in the hospital one time, and a man was dying, and his son and him was very close, and he was walking the halls just wringing his hand. And his wife wasn't there. And the boy's mom was having a hard time with that. But I, we went aside and we talked a little bit. I think she began to understand that the, the, the situation that she grew up in maybe didn't teach her what families normally do. I think she loved, loved the boy, but I'm not sure that she understood how much he needed her at that moment. And sometimes we have to learn. So we learned. She got to thinking about that and she said, Ryan, you've got to learn how to give love, don't you? You need someone to teach you that. And that's true. I needed God to teach me that. But when you understand that folks can't are not unable to give you what you need because whatever's happened in their life or whatever maybe they've lacked, it tends to make you what? Forgiving. It's called ignorance. And God wants to deliver us from ignorance. Sometimes we think we don't want to know, but trust me, if your house is on fire, you want to know whether you have to deal with it or not. There's, I look at conversation as things, that you're giving things or taking things. That's not always true, but often it is. And you could probably tell what kind of person you're hanging out with by how you feel <laughs> after you leave them. Some folks exhaust you when they show up. Some folks refresh you. And our goal as Christians is to be amongst those that we refresh. Now, don't get me wrong. Occasionally, I'm the one that cause I'm my job to cause problems. On occasion, Jesus caused problems. But he only caused problems when people was saying they was doing the right thing when they wasn't. It wasn't sinners... You know, some folks, Christians, if they hang out with sinners, sinners would get tired of them awful quick, wouldn't they? But I think, I think there's something about Jesus that he gave a drink of water to those that are around him. He stood up in the 
in the feast day, the Bible says, he said, come unto me. Hey, here's the source. Come unto me, he said. All you that are weak and heavy laden, he said, I will give you rest. So he was standing up and said, this is the place to look. And it's not the first time. You know, for us, it should be obvious that Jesus is a place that looked. But for those folks, oftentimes it wouldn't. And for people in this world, oftentimes it's not. They think they, if they'll get this one thing straight, their, their life will be good. But if they gain the whole world, folks, and lose their soul, they still haven't got very much. Jesus sat down on the edge of a well. Woman thought she was coming to the source. She found out the source was at the source. Because while she talked to him, the revelation came that this man has what we need. This man is something supernatural about him. She saw a Jew, I like to say. And she saw a prophet, she thought. But as her vision cleared, she began to see him. She said, we know that the Messiah would come. And when she left there, she became a source. Come. A man has told me all that I've done. And they, they came. And through our lives, we find that way. We go someplace to get something. We speak to get something. We speak to give something. We can be one of those people and we tend to overflow whatever it was. The Bible says that from the abundance of the heart or the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If you're around people very long, it's you start figuring out what's going on in the heart if they're looking to give or if they're looking to receive. The person that's looking to give tends to be you know, he's looking for that opportunity. Jesus wanted to do both. He says, give me a drink of water. He says, but he went on to explain. He said, if you know who to you is talking, you said, you'd ask me for water. He knew what he had. And sometimes when you run into folks, they're so full of what's going on in their life, they never get to what's going on in your life. And sometimes I know that we go through hard places. But it amazes me that even Jesus on the cross being crucified was a source to those that are around him. A man being crucified as a thief. I don't know if he ever had hope for anything being ever different, but he did after he talked to Jesus on the cross. Isn't it amazing to be in that kind of pain and yet still people were drawing from him what they needed? On the cross, he looked down upon his mom and took compassion on her and looked at his disciples and said, there's your mother. And he saw that she was taken care of. On the way to the cross, folks, he spoke. People were weeping for him. He's still looking to be a source. He said, don't weep for me. Because he was going to become that ultimate source, folks. He was going to become that ultimate source. So when we show up, you know, we need to figure out what's going on, what people are looking for. When I first got married, my wife liked to jump on me with both feet with all the things that went wrong when they got home. You know why? Because she had she was living in the middle of it. <laughs> Off time something you maybe she'd try to do the laundry or I don't know whatever went on. Things broke. It's nothing like having a big tub full of water and throwing all your clothes, most of your clothes in there, then realize that it's not going to work. But somewhere along the line, my honey, she started taking compassion on me. Because when I need, got home, I was ready for some what? A little bit of peace. And she would give that to me. I don't know what it cost her. Women like to share. That must have been hard on her. <laughs> but she'd let me sit down. Sometimes if it was cold, I'd drink coffee and then supper would be ready and I'd eat it. Then she'd tell me my, that I'm going to be pretty busy this weekend. Something's broke. <laughs> 
But she discerned what I needed. And folks, that's a difficult thing to do sometimes when we got needs of our own. But we come in two different ways. And we have to discern what we're wanting to give. You know, I begin to think of our sources that people come to. In the <clears throat> one place that comes to my mind, they came to a place in the wilderness so thirsty. And the water was bitter. <laughs> Boy, they was upset. But God showed Moses a tree and he took and he cast it into that water and he began to change what kind of source it was. All through, I think all through our walk, God wants to change what kind of source that we are. I remember Mike Faree, evangelist, talking. He's, he got saved. You know how mamas are. It's never baby's fault. It's always you know the crowd they hung out with. And he said, oh, you got, in, you got in with the wrong crowd. He says, Mom, I was the wrong crowd. Apparently he was the instigator. But God changed him from that. To begin to tell, he, he was bound in drugs and he was rough. And I think he told me he'd been shot before because of his involvement in drugs. But God changed him, and he became something different than that bed of water. He began to go out and begin to lead in young folks that was bound in drugs and sin and lust, and they began to get saved. I remember when they all started to come in, it was because of one person. God had changed his water from bitter to sweet. Ought to come a place that we're no longer thinking of ourselves as victims or as that person that we used to be. We're serving the resurrected Christ. We ought to be able to stand at the temple gate and say, Silver and gold have I none. That's not hard to figure out. That's just a quick check of the pocket. But the other part, some folks ain't quite figured out yet. But such as I have. I was a person who couldn't give anything before. But now I'm a person who got something to give because we had this treasure in earth and vessels. And I believe that every time I come to church. I, my prayer is only simple this. God, if you would just give me the right words to say, chains would be broken. Lord, if you give me the right words to say, tormented hearts would be set free. Lord, the fearful will become calm, God, if you just give me the right words to say, because I can do this, God, because of what you've put in me and what you've done for me. I don't have to be that bitter water anymore. He's changed who I am. It is so disappointing when people wanting what they have need of and they come to us and they find out that we don't got what they thought we had. I think it was in the book of Jude. Jude talked about these people were really bad, but the, the uh, phrase that he spoke that comes to my mind, he says, they're clouds without water. In other words, they look like they got what they need to give you, but they don't. And I said, oh, God, I can't think of anything any worse than for a church to be called, Lord, for a Christian to be called, to be to look like they got something, folks. And when folks get there needing it, they don't have anything. And that only comes about sometimes because we don't really have a relationship with the Lord. We're still that bitter water that needs to be changed. Another place comes into mind, I think it was Elijah, who sat down to eat a meal. And the food that they had, they realized it was poison. You see, God's going to change it. He took some salt and he cast it into the pot. And he said, go ahead and eat. <laughs> I wonder who was first. <laughs> 
You bring me a toadstool and I sprinkle salt on it. I say, go ahead and eat. Y'all going to leave me. uh uh-uh, you go ahead and eat. But it was in his power to take a bitter situation and make it better. As you follow God, you'll find that there are times in your life that just like Jesus and the woman who touched him in the crowd and he felt virtue go out, you'll find that there are times in your life you'll feel something go out from yourself to another because God has placed you in a place that you might change the situation and supply what they have need of. Sometimes we're afraid people will come and ask for something. We don't got nothing to give. That's sort of like the disciples. Send them away, Lord, so they can buy themselves something to eat. Think, boys. You give them something to eat. <laughs> he might as well, if he told me that, then I'd, he might as well be asking me to fly. Because I wouldn't have been there either. I ain't. I ain't looking down on them. I wouldn't have been there. I would have done just like I did. Rough calculation, Lord. This much money is not enough to feed this many people. Don't take long to figure out what you don't got. He's trying to make them think different about what they do got. They are a source now because they've tapped into something bigger. And when you tap into that something bigger, folks, and you you become that channel that God begins to move through. Oh, I want God's people to think different about themselves. Just little old me, I don't want you to think that anymore. I want you to expect God to use you. James wrote one place, he was talking about the power of the tongue. And he goes on and says that if Many, many things have been tamed by man. But he says that for every creature, animal, or bird, reptile, or fish is tamed and has been tamed by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. He starts out that chapter and said, Not many of you should be teachers. Because, because we have to use a lot of words. And when you teach people the wrong thing, folks, they carry around a weight they're not supposed to carry. Sometimes it'll keep them from getting a hold of what they're supposed to get a hold of. But he also recognizes that there is a God that is greater. See, we can't tame this. We need God to tame this. Then this is fixed. Somewhere along the line, I told you at the beginning when, when I first got saved, I'd cuss. And I'd repent. I'd cuss and I'd repent. I didn't like that cycle. <laughs> I didn't like that cycle. I come to my knees and I've been back saved for about a week and I come back to church the next weekend. I get on my knees and I just remember the scripture from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I can't fix it. I can't get there from here, Lord. The mouth, the tongue, you can't control it. Unless whatever's causing it in here is fixed. And I said, oh God, I don't even know what's wrong with me. But my heart is wrong. Please. And he fixed me. Because he fixed here. Couldn't do it. Couldn't change it. And for something that was gushing out things that shouldn't have been gushed out, began to pour out different things. 